Hello everyone, Trix here, and welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Let's continue in the third dungeon of the game, because this is where we were when we left off last time. <laughs> time for us to get rid of the pulse vice. For some reason that actually feels like the first thing we needed to do. <laughs> The moment we stopped last time, we actually um, got ourselves the dungeon map for Poison Moth's Lair, which is dungeon 3 in um, The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. It looks like this. Especially the first floor looks interesting. There's only rooms on the edges, which is funny. <laughs> but that is indeed where we are. We are also in the possession of a key, but other than that we uh, did not really do a whole lot. And therefore, today we are planning to actually finish this place. Looks like we're immediately going to get started with something fun, namely puzzling. Puzzling is um, a set thing in uh, The Legend of Zelda, so... <laughs> Sometimes we actually need to do that, and in this case we actually need to make sure the statues on the lower row will actually um, become the same as the top row. So make sure to actually do this correctly. Because um, there's not a whole lot of room to work with. I need to make sure I still have room for that final grey one. Which I can do like this. This one will go over here, and then I can actually push you to the left, like this. Right. Puzzle solved. <laughs> Let's make sure I don't make a set thing out of that. <laughs> P-hat. Don't really think I'm interested in those. Next room. Mini Moldorms. Those are a bit more difficult to ignore. <laughs> Ow. It's pretty obvious there's also a pathway above us, as you can see. The rooms we're actually traversing right now also have an upper section. Keep those in mind. You might actually uh, come there at some point. <laughs> First we're going to be uh, dealing with this section. The platform to the left looks tempting, but that's actually non-accessible, as you can see. And that will actually force us to this key door. Especially the blade trap in here is um, really fast moving. <laughs> Therefore, not recommended to actually stay on the outer edges. I would actually suggest going into the middle as quickly as possible. And then actually use your D-pad to lure these guys towards you. And then we will actually receive a chest, obviously containing the dungeon item. The Rock's Feather! You feel as light as a feather. With everything we have seen so far, this was also a pretty predictable item to receive. <laughs> Finally, the ability to jump. That is definitely what we needed. Not just in the dungeon, but also in the entire game. <laughs> Not having the ability to jump was definitely um, getting to us. Now, this platform is suddenly accessible. <laughs> Make sure not to fall. It's pretty obvious this is a um, floor we can actually... Whoa! Now that we're here, let's grab the rupee chest. Don't really need any rupees, I've got plenty of them already, so... <laughs> Not really doing it for that, but... Um, yeah, like I was trying to explain, if you fall here, you will actually fall to a lower room. Something we still need to do, but we actually want to do it over here. Because then we will actually fall on a higher ledge, containing a staircase. Non-accessible otherwise. Moving on to the next part of the dungeon. A lot of keys down here. But hopefully they shouldn't bother us. Oh, nice, I actually missed the jump. <laughs> Need to get used to the um, controls of the Rock's Feather again. Did not actually think I would jump that far. Actually need to hold back a bit here. This looks simple enough. Like this. And then we actually end up in a room containing a trampoline. There's also an owl statue... Um, would actually explain how this works, but I of course can also do that. <laughs> the trampoline in here will actually make us bounce up to the upper floor. However, it only works if we are able to. The rock's feather can be used to jump on a trampoline, and if we are under an open tile on the floor above, we can actually jump up to the floor above. In this case it will actually lead towards the next key item in this place, the compass. But other than that, it is actually a dead end. In order to continue, we need to make sure the trampoline is pushed to the other tile. We were already able to see in the other room. There's indeed another place where we can actually jump up. And luckily, they actually colored in the place we need to jump up. <laughs> Making it easy to find out. 
Right, this roller is actually um, placed in such a way that we're normally not able to get past, even if we push it. And now, we of course have the rock's feather. And that is how we solve the rest of this puzzle. <laughs> Just pushing the roller is not enough now. We also need to jump sometimes. That way we can get to the right. Oh, come on. No, no. <laughs> this is what I wanted to do. Doot, 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 doot. Hello, key chest. But you are on the other side of the room, so... Uh, <laughs> the jingle by the compass is not really helping me right now. We know we are close. However, we might actually be able to use this trampoline. That way we can actually get to the other side of the room. On the other side of the wall. We do need to be careful, because this is kind of trampoline that we can actually um, get stuck. If we push it against the wall, we will not be able to actually um, move it any further. Make sure you're always able to squeeze yourself in between it and the wall. <laughs> and that way we can actually get it to the colored tile. And to the chest. Let's switch my items. This works a bit better, I think. And grab the key. And moving back down again. Staircase. Next to D section. So, of course, more jumping. Now that we have the rock's feather, of course, all of the 2D sections are going to be a lot of jumping challenges. <laughs> this game is going to discover the platforming. Legend of Zelda can also be a platforming game sometimes, a little bit. <laughs> Only the Adventure of Link is a true platforming game. All of the other 2D Zeldas can sometimes only be a platforming game. <laughs> Usually in uh, these side-scrolling sections. Now we end up back here. This actually should look familiar. And now with the feather we are able to actually um, get past. <laughs> now from here we actually need to return to that um, switch that we saw earlier. Near the staircase with the uh, mimics. It's actually a switch that we are able to press and then the walkway would actually fall. Now that we have the rock's feather, uh, that is also a puzzle we are able to solve. <laughs> it's actually down this door. Alright. This room. This is where we needed to be. We started off the episode at the um, room above the stairs, but now we are going to return here. Back to this section. Remember, the moment we press the switch, the tiles actually fell, making it impossible to cross. But with the rock's feather, we are actually able to jump over the switch. <laughs> and therefore, the tiles won't fall, and we are able to continue to this section. There's going to be a locked door over here, but first we're going to grab the chest, of course. We actually saw a chest um, around the pathway over here. Going to ignore the yowl. Can't be too interesting what he has to say. <laughs> And we're going to move around and get you. Boom, Gasha Seed. As long as we don't have the heart piece, we're going to need plenty of them. <laughs> and hopefully we're going to be able to find a lot of tier 2 and tier 3 soft soil locations to actually increase those odds. Into the mini boss room. What are we going to deal with this time? Not one mini boss, but once again multiple. <laughs> We're going to be coming out of the water over here, and the moment they pop up, we actually want to grab them and carry them out of the water. Actually revealing them as some sort of squid. <laughs> and the moment they're on the dry, we can actually hit them with our sword. At least hopefully. It's not that easy as it looks, apparently. <laughs> of course, they're going to be bouncing around, making it a bit difficult. Boom. No, not quite. Get over here. <laughs> I'm almost dying, so I need to be careful. Three hearts remaining. Boom. Boom. And we are done. Thank you for the fairy. Definitely needed one. <laughs> Back to full health. And the staircase continuing the dungeon will appear. Still after the boss key, after all. That is the only thing we are still missing. And of course also finding the boss door itself. <laughs> that is also this direction. 
So, remember this part? I told you to actually uh, keep track of the upper pathway over here. The boss room is going to be this direction. But of course, we first need to grab the key, and that is not going to be that direction. <laughs> We're going to be taking this second pathway. And actually fall down to the basement floor. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Guess which key that's going to be. <laughs> be careful for the blade trap over here. Make sure you have some room. And then we are going to be able to push a block somewhere over here. Whoa! Also make sure that you don't fall in yourself. <laughs> and then jump away to the chest. Thank you. I think it is boss time. First we need to make our way back towards the room where we were, of course. <laughs> Jump! <laughs> Alright, this way we'll actually uh, return to the beginning of the dungeon. This is actually the second room. So, uh, I think the shortcut is actually the fastest way to return to where we were. This way we can immediately go to the mini boss room. And return to this staircase. Now returning to that first pathway we actually saw. And make our way towards the boss. This way. The only place in the dungeon we have not been to yet. And there we are. Make sure the pea heads don't drain too much of your health. <laughs> that would be a waste. Not that the boss is going to be very difficult, but still. Why wouldn't you want to be full health? Okay, the pea heads are going to leave me alone by the looks of it. We are safe. We can go in full health. <laughs> Ah, Mafula. What a surprise to actually find that in the poison moth lair. <laughs> Another returning Zelda boss. However, this one not from the first game, of course. <laughs> but we are going to be able to beat him quite easily. This one is, like I promised, pretty easy. Just make sure not to fall into this pit over here. You can actually fall and that will actually end the boss fight. But if you make sure that does not happen, you're going to be able to use these islands in the middle or just stay on the edges to hit this guy with your sword. There's no real uh, weak point to this guy. No real uh, thing to exploit. <laughs> we can simply hit him whenever we want. Awesome. And that takes care of boss number three. Hard container. First one on the second row. And Link is doing a great job so far. And that makes three out of eight dungeons complete. Oh yeah, and this is actually the point where you uh, end up the moment you fall in the boss room. As you can see, there's a trampoline over here, and that you will use to return to the boss chamber. But you do have to start the fight over again the moment you do. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. We get the bright sun. An essence of nature. Young shoots grow quickly under the warm rays of the bright sun. Well done. Oh, help, the fines are not here anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Trix. I too feel the bright sun, but the powers of darkness do not weaken. Instead, they grow stronger. How can this be? Trix, I dreamt of the waterfall on the mountain north of Sunken City. Perhaps the next essence is near there. Sunken City. Let's remember that. That is going to be the next destination. We did actually see that on a sign somewhere at some point, didn't we? <laughs> so we should know where we need to go. And we need to start looking for that next essence. I, however, of course, have something different planned. Now that we have a new item. And of course also a new season that we can actually input. <laughs> There's a couple of things that open up for us. And therefore, it is perhaps not a bad idea to start doing some... Um, Loose ends. Let's call them loose ends. <laughs> we are able to change the season into summer now. We used it in order to enter the dungeon, but we can actually use it for more things. Obviously. <laughs> Let's return to summer. The game actually auto-corrects the season into autumn over here, like it always does. But we actually want to have it summer. And that way, we can actually check something out. And this is going to be optional, by the way, so if you're interested in the story, and uh, collecting heart pieces and stuff like that. I wouldn't follow along. This is actually not meant for that. <laughs> but there is something else we can actually uh, check out. Some sort of side quest. 
you will actually find out the moment we meet up with it. It is only going to appear in summer, so make sure it is summer. And then make your way over here. And let's go try to actually jump over this gap. I know technically a two-space gap actually requires the Pegasus seeds in order to jump further. Technically it is possible to actually do it without. I, however, doubt my uh, capabilities and therefore I'm not going to try. <laughs> but technically you can actually do this without the Pegasus seeds. This trick we actually know from Oracle of Ages also works in this game, of course. Use the Pegasus seeds and you're able to jump further. And that way in summer we are actually able to get ourselves uh, to Maple, apparently. <laughs> Let's go see if we can actually um, get ourselves... I completely missed her. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> well, no matter. Let's just continue what we were doing. Namely, finding the first golden enemy in this game. Also want to make sure I don't get eaten by uh, stupid parasites living in these holes. <laughs> But yeah, here is the first golden enemy in the game. We're actually able to find four of these in the game. For a side quest, there's going to be a old man cave at some point in the game. Who's going to be talking about golden enemies. And they will actually appear on four set locations in the overworld on a set season. In this case, it always appears on this screen in summer. It takes uh, a crap load of hits, but eventually he will die. <laughs> and that will take care of the first golden enemy in the game. The other three we're not going to be able to defeat for a while, and therefore it is also no use to actually talk about the um, location for the side quest. We will actually find that later. Technically that is actually also available now it's the summer, but um, there's no need to actually go there. <laughs> and I cannot swim, so Dimitri, I need your swimming capabilities. <laughs> right. North. More yummy snacks for Dimitri. <laughs> oh, I'm almost dying, by the way. <laughs> oh, going the wrong way. Cannot go north from here. Oh, careful. <laughs> no. Ah. First game over, coming up. <laughs> Luckily, there's no enemies anymore in this uh, location. Give me a heart, please. Oh, three of them even. Thank you, game. <laughs> it gives me some air. Right. Oh, come on. <laughs> Enemies, man. Anyway, this is why we wanted to go to the Flood Gatekeeper's house again. After the dungeon, a new NPC will actually appear here. In a linked game. And you know what that means. I am the mother of Mamamoo Yan. The Brinna's top dog breeder. This fella is from Labrina too, but we met here by chance. Can you help me? Yeah, more secrets. Can you tell the secrets to my daughter, Mamamoo Yan, in Labrina? Sure. The secret is... Circle, star, Y, N, capital G. Got it, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Please tell my daughter. Yeah, I think I need to do that soon. I'm getting way too many secrets. <laughs> I actually want to start cashing in on the rewards by now. <laughs> a couple of them are actually uh, pretty handy to use in a game like this. Not per se an Oracle of Ages. I've already completed that game, but uh, <laughs> I can definitely use them here. And now that we're done with the dungeon, also almost done with the episodes by the looks of it. Oh yeah, of course, now that it's summer, we can also um, check out this sign. Almost forgot about that. It is on my notes, but I actually um, forgot to read to that far. <laughs> Treeks, you're my best customer. Take this special gift. Vasu. Oh, interesting. This is actually the hiding spot for Vasu. <laughs> Let's go see what he's hiding here. Let's dig. And find a ring. Also need to appraise those, actually. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've got plenty of them by now. I know you're hiding under that rock, stupid monster. <laughs> Not going to fall for that. So, let's go return towards the Gasha tree. Or at least hopefully it is going to be a Gasha tree by now. <laughs> we actually planted one near here the moment we were riding Ricky. 
Oh yeah, and this is also something I can actually quickly go over. Don't worry, if Ricky is not your partner, and you're therefore not able to actually find him anymore, we can actually change the season into summer here, and then vines will actually be growing here. So even when Dimitri is your partner, you're still able to actually get here. Dimitri, it is also possible to still get here, because vines can actually grow in summer. But don't think Dimitri is a poor choice of animal buddy. <laughs> He's definitely not. Yeah, the tree seems to be done, and we get... A potion. Well, I've been almost dying a couple of times, so also not per se a bad thing. <laughs> I've still got two more. Um, we'll check that one out later. It does not look like it is done. So, returning to Horan Village, or at least North Horan. Let's go grab the ferry quickly. And once again, uh, losing a lot of health. <laughs> I've got so many hearts, and yet I'm still dying, left and right. Returning to North Horan. It's been a while since we've been here. <laughs> Time for the next secret. See those trees over here? You've guessed it. In summer, those are actually accessible. Because once again, we've got vines growing. <laughs> Let's see what we have over there. It's going to be the final thing we're going to be doing today, by the looks of it. Already at 21 minutes. Man. Need to hurry it up. Burn. Burn. Ah, looks like to be an old man cave. And this time around we actually do want to talk to him. <laughs> Three rupees. So, with that we are actually um, pretty much back at the center of the world map. Perfect place to stop. Thank you for watching. I will see you folks next time when we continue. And Treeks out.